Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name is Andy, my channel is Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna do our daily technical analysis update of commodities, work our way through the dollar, yields, precious metals, and commodity ETFs that I follow. I'm gonna interject my financial opinions as we go. And if you need help with anything, check out finding-value.com. That's where I dive deeper into the individual companies on how to play this commodity bull market, precious metals bull market that we are in and is progressing. So uh, we do have a coupon code, Mayday, M-A-Y-D-A-Y. If you're interested in joining, you can try out the membership 50% off the first month. Uh, for only the first month off, is it 50% off? Uh, and you have a larger discount if you use that discount for signing up for a yearly membership. So uh, let's dive in here. Let's take a look and see what's going on uh, in the short term here. So the DXY, that's where we always start, uh, looks eerily similar to what oil looks like. Uh, so if you were to kind of look at this fractal, and a fractal is a repeating pattern over time. So this guy here, this guy here, and that guy there, um, oil's basically doing the same thing. And with oil's strength today, this could start to work its way on up along with yields. Um, I've been talking about the dollar and the potential weakness in the dollar and the potential weakness in yields. But to me, <laughs> this is this is kind of the period where it's like, are we going to go higher or are we going to go lower in the dollar and yields? <clears throat> yields were pretty strong today. They're looking pretty strong. And so is our boy crude oil. And we'll call that kid crudy. <laughs> You know, Kid Cuddy, Kid Kid Crudy over there uh, looking strong today. And when oil goes up, rates go up. When rates go up, dollar goes up. It's all kind of interconnected. Uh, so let's see where the dollar goes. And then we'll take a look at yields here. But we could see this work its way around. And, and in the short term, guys, this is kind of what happens. You flip flop back around. You think, we could go lower, we could go higher uh, in the short term based on a variety of different short term patterns. And that's why I don't like trading in the short term because you can flip flop a lot. Uh, and that's what occurs on the short term. You flip flop a lot based off of new information uh, that comes into play. Longer term, yeah, precious metals, oil, it's all going higher. The dollar, yep. We were uh, flat today for the dollar, but yields were strengthening. <clears throat> now, is this going to work its way on up? Um, what I've seen is stronger crude oil. Usually yields follow crude oil. So that I think this is a possibility where we could still could continue higher. We do have this coming on up. I think that was trying to price in this breakdown here, was trying to price in what the Federal Reserve was going to do. And I think the market thinks that the Federal Reserve uh, is probably going to lower rates. But with crude oil going up, I think that might be changing. And that's the short term kind of paradigm that I think the markets kind of look at all this stuff through. So the two years up, the 10 years up, that looks real strong. And the 30 years also up, and that also looks very strong. Uh, so short term, strength in yields. Probably strength is going to manifest itself with strength in the dollar. We've got the TYX, TNX ratio that I follow. It is still inverted. Staying inverted too. It's like almost like it's calming down in its volatility and in its inversion. Uh, when it unverts, precious metals do well. When it stays inverted, we could still have crude oil be riveted. TLT, which is bond prices, not looking as strong. Uh, at all. It actually looks like it wants to go lower. Hence, my change in my opinion of why I think yields could go up, bond prices down. It's based off of yield, the yields chart and bond prices. We had two big bullish engulfings here. It looked like it was going to go on up. We came into some resistance up here and we are coming back down. Uh, so getting some volatility in bond prices and yields. Two-year, 10-year, we got an uninversion of the yield curve, but that uninversion 
was with the curve going up. So we are still inverted, bigger, longer term, still inverted, and yields are going on up here. Gold didn't give one iota of a, of a thing today. We are going on up, uh, up $25 an ounce roughly. Now, is this momentum going to, going to carry us lower here? Uh, or, and, and yields, higher yields have an impact on gold. I'm not really sure on that. Um, this is one to watch to see if it has follow through to the downside because of the, the pressure coming in. Uh, but we could continue higher with the momentum that's being generated in the precious metals space. Um, we're seeing a lot of strength in silver. And if that continues to roll on higher, it may drag all of the rest with it. And that is what I said a while back, that we could see the relationship of the past 40 years break down and gold and silver run up with yields because people are afraid of bonds. They want to get into precious metals uh, and get away from financial assets. And has that started yet? We'll, we'll definitely see and watch. Silver's up 5.64%, just ripping it. Absolute ripping, and it looks fantastic to continue to the upside with today's price action and how strong it closed. Still looks really good. We've got platinum also following it, and this is back doing a retest, and we are up today 2.8%. We could see this break out here. I think it's a possibility that silver rips and, and drags the whole precious metals complex up with it. Um, it could be due to physical shortages in the market that are gonna drive prices to unimaginable levels because it's going to uncover potentially some, some paper market not being able to cover the physical market. That's what it could uncover. And then it's going to uncover that for the entire precious metals um, sector, everything. And you can see palladium even start to rip too. Uh, even though this metal is basically out of cycle, I do think it's going to probably go sideways for a little bit. But if everything gets uncovered here, if it does, and I'm not saying it will, uh, we could see everything rip. Everything. We've got XAU to gold ratio. It continues higher. Remember what I said earlier about breaking. The need to break this line for happiness, that thing. We've come on back and we've broken it. It is broken out. We, everyone, should be bullish on gold and silver mining companies, which is XAU, against gold. And that is your bull case, guys. We need to be bullish gold and silver mining companies. And I don't care if they haven't worked for a very long time. Doesn't matter. This is from coming from a ridiculously low period. And a lot of the charts in gold and silver mining companies look pretty dang good. CRB index, uh, we are flat today. But again, I think it looks like it's improving. We do have this kind of waterfall move lower. Uh, but it's worked its way on up. And we'll see if that momentum can continue. We've got CRB to S&P just moving sideways today. Let's hold it on inside of this falling um, flag pattern which will, I think, eventually work our way on up. GDX up 2.4%. It's holding on quite well. Are we going to go up with yields going up? That I do not know. That's what we're going to watch for. <clears throat> we're going to watch for GDXJ. It's right underneath resistance. We start breaking through these big horizontal resistance levels. We are going to run forest run. It is going to be really fun to hold GDXJ for this period of time if we can break out here. SILJ also up quite, quite well today, 4%. We have this nice kind of steep correction there. We're, we've come on up, we've bounced, and we'll see if we can get follow through uh, over the next days, weeks. Crude oil, crude oil, my boy kid crudy. Look at this thing, up. 3.13% today, looking fantastic, feeling fantastic. Uh, I got a lot of investments in crude oil. I really do like seeing this. There's the, 
the pattern that we basically broke, guys. It's looking good. Now, where do we go from here? I think we're going up. <laughs> I think we're going up, boys. Um, we broke out of that in the short term. We're sitting on top of, if we look at it logarithmically, we're sitting on top of the pattern. So I think that we've got a big move ahead of us if they don't control the price of those precious metals. And I'm, I might do an entire different clip on this of crude oil, but um, this is looking pretty good. And my uh, bullishness has increased quite substantially now that we have broken out here in the short term. Um, we still could get a return move, a retest move before heading higher, but um, we should be looking here, guys. And there are some opportunities that we should definitely be looking at right now. And if you're part of the website, you guys already know the opportunities. But uh, if you're not, it, it, it deals with some relationships um, with crude oil and gold. TTF gas down a little bit. This still looks fantastic. Um, just small, small selling pressure days there coming on back. Um, I think the momentum's still to the upside. Natural gas in America up 3%, looking pretty good. Uh, we had a sharp little correction here the past two days. Um, we are up today, and we'll see if we can turn this correction around here. That is a bullish piercing pattern, but again, we're right at this whole side, you know, this whole can of resistance here. That's where we're at. Um, our boy XOP, yeah, you know me, I'm going to get incredibly bullish if we can break out of this thing to the upside. That's really kind of my last straw that needs to be pulled here for me to be really bullish. Remember, we're sitting on a big pattern here, inverted head and shoulders that has broken to the upside of that uh, neckline of it. And we've been consolidating on top of it. Uh, you guys know the lead-in pattern that I always talk about. Well, this is it. I mean, this is it, and it looks like we're ready to hopefully engage launch mode. And again, just to reiterate, oil and oil equities do very well when interest rates go up. And what are we seeing with interest rates? Yeah, they're going up. OIH, the energy service companies, these are also um, going to be very bullish if we get those market conditions increasing rates and stuff. And I would expect this to go on up. It's like we've got this lead-in pattern of this channel that just keeps going up and up and up and up. And I think at some point, it's going to accelerate its move like that. So think of it as going up, 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 up like this, and then it's going to accelerate and go. Uh, so I think something like that uh, could occur here out in the future, hopefully within the year or so. Uh, Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. <clears throat> Uh, right underneath some resistance, and we're just hanging on, moving sideways for the Sprout Physical Uranium Trust. Uh, URA up 1.5%, still above all of this support, still looks good to continue higher. We've got URNM also up 0.66% today, above support, and still looks okay if it can hold on. We do have a little bit of selling pressure before it, but I think we'll hold here. And then URNJ also. Um, up about a percent and above support. So we're really above support in all of the ETFs for uranium. URNJ versus URNM, this is one that I'm watching. I'm looking for the juniors to outperform at some point very soon. If those juniors start to outperform here, I am going to be ultra bullish on the junior companies. Ultra, ultra bullish. I already am bullish, I've already positioned because they look decent, like they're trying to bottom of the bottom here, and I try catching bottoms. That's what I do. And if I see this thing start to outperform, you'll probably, I'll probably be very happy. Let's put it that way. Uh, TAN up a little bit, uh, up 0.25%. That does look pretty good from a longer term perspective. Maybe we can try to bottom here. Uh, the only thing that I'll say about solar is this thing consumes silver, and I don't know what that looks like if silver were to launch to the moon here and what that impact has on TAN. I'd rather be in silver. Uh, copper up 2.3%, pretty strong day. Uh, let's get this momentum. Let's keep this thing going in the upper trend line. 
Um, we can put a trend line in there. We can kind of throw one in here like this. Throw like that going on. And uh, we'll see if that trend line holds. But it's a pretty, pretty steep trend line. So those steep trend lines can get broken pretty easily and we could consolidate. Uh, COPX up 2.9%, also looking pretty good. It's had a pretty good run, um, 32 bucks to 50 bucks in a pretty short period of time. Um, but again, I, I'm not doing anything. We could get a retest uh, back to you know, levels that are like, let's just say going across here. We could, back, we could do a retest there before moving on up. A little bit of resistance coming through there. Lithium down a teeny bit. Uh, it's still trying to find a bottom here. We've got REMX doing the same thing. A little bit of strong selling pressure the past week or so. It still looks like it's trying to gather itself. Almost like the fossil fuels are holding these things down and, and some of the commodities like copper and uh, some of those other things, mining materials. But a lot of these, you know, these are inputs for electric vehicles and all these other things. And if copper is short, it could have an impact on rare earth metals on lithium because it'll slow the production of the things that pull rare earths and lithium uh, for production, if that makes sense. Um, S&P 500, uh, low, but basically sideways today. I don't like seeing these big bearish engulfing patterns. It makes me think that we want to go sideways or lower. Uh, so we'll see what occurs there. And uh, that is on the shorter term time frame, the, the dailies there. And we'll see if we can overcome that big bearish engulfing. Here's another one there too. Uh, but NASDAQ was up 0.6% today, kind of pushed up above it. And we'll see if that can keep going. Russell 2000, a little bit of selling pressure today. Not much. Uh, but again, you get these big selling pressure days and you've got a pattern. It makes me think it wants to roll over. But here's a huge but. If they're printing money as fast as they are, these things can crash upwards where you get a slowdown in the market, but there's so much inflation in the system that they continue to go up. So that is also a possibility. KRE, so anything that's inflation sensitive was basically down today. Uh, carries down, interest rates up. We've got emerging markets down with dollar and interest rates up. We've got XHB down with dollar and interest rates up. So anything that's inflation sensitive, and Mu is also inflation sensitive, and it was flat today. Uh, this does look like it's basing out here at some point, um, and will turn and work its way on up. But all of those sectors that we just went over, lithium, um, REMX, which is rare earths, Home builders, emerging markets, banking, they're, some of those are very sensitive to interest rates. I mean, interest rates look like they're going to go up. Uh, iron ore, down a little bit. That was riding. This might also be a little bit sensitive to interest rates, but we'll see. But iron ore still looks good to go higher. Uh, same with nickel. Nickel, it's pulled back a little bit, but uh, still looks good. Still looks good. Momentum's to the upside. Aluminum also ripping today. Um, I've told this to people and, and members a while back. I said, look, guys, aluminum looks pretty tight. Second half of 2024 and onward 2025, we could see the price start to work its way on up. I don't know how we're going to solve some of these tightnesses in the market in the short term. So I think prices are going to run for a while. I don't even know if we're going to solve them in the long term, to be honest, in terms of copper, maybe even aluminum. Uh, the copper, especially. Baltic Tri Index working sideways, still looking all right. Uh, Newcastle Coal down a little bit, but we've broken the downtrend. I am still remaining bullish to the upside on it. Uh, natural gas has been working higher. I, I, I do think coal is going to work its way on higher. Bitcoin down, surprisingly, uh, down 1.8%, but we're still above the pattern. So that still looks bullish to me to move higher. We've got Ethereum. That also looks good. I mean, we were down today 1.4, but everything looks intact to continue higher. No reversal candlestick. Um, it still looks all right. And we've got SMCI down a little bit, but that's still in a flag pattern. That is still bullish to work its way on up. And NVIDIA uh, up quite large today. 7% looks like 
We've got the speculative juices flowing. We've broken out to the upside of this and we are running. Now, some people will ask, is NVIDIA good to purchase up here? No, I don't care what NVIDIA does. The valuations, in my opinion, are not that great. So I don't wanna take on the risk of trying to buy something that's overvalued that's going to be highly sensitive to earnings releases because of the valuation being so richly valued. Uh, so this could go up, but I mean, it's at 2.85 trillion market cap. Do you think this company can 10 bag to the upside? Do you think this can be a 28 trillion market cap? The only way we would get there is if they printed a bunch of money. So again, I'm not convinced that we even have the power to run these chips that these guys are selling. So I'm gonna go play the power. I'm gonna go play the power generation and energy generation side, which would be natural gas, uranium, and all those things uh, on that side. I don't even know if we've got, uh, uh, yeah, but I will just say, I don't know if we got the power. I'll just say that. But uh, that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, thumb up for the content, subscribe to the channel, subscribe to the website. Uh, if you'd like, we've got that Mayday coupon code. Uh, lots of stuff going on in the markets uh, still, and we still have some pretty good buy points in some energy service companies, some precious metals companies. Um, they're, they're still out there if you're looking. Uh, but that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.